Bonjour and welcome to our new rebuild. This week's rebuild, we're heading over to France as we were managing Lille. We'll be going to the Decathlon stage and we'll be taking over Lille, of course. Having won a league title a few seasons ago, we want to see can we take Lille back to those heights and win another league earned title and beat that juggernaut that is Paris Saint Germain. So let's dive in. So, day one, the job this is how you get welcomed at Lille, of course. You don't have no current club captain, who, as I find, has been moved on now by this point. And there's a lot of work to do to try and rebuild this team to get them back to challenging at the dizzy heights of the league earned title. And to help get Lil back to the top, we're going to be using the Murph and Perfect 4 3 3 tactic that we reached a couple of weeks ago. It's been doing absolute bits so far in a lot of our rebuilds and a lot of other sides we've been messing around with the tactic on. And the team it's going to put for us is like this. Wunyas, David and Bayo up top. Cabela in that central midfield role. Got Beliba and Andre in those ball winning field defensive midfielder roles there you can see. Dejalo, Umtiti, Zidanka, Ismaili in them fullback positions. And then Chevalier in goal. And of course the likes of Halard would be interesting to try and get into this team. I'm trying to think we're about to retrain him obviously. We couldn't play with an actual cam position. So maybe out wide, maybe in the CM position. We're going to try and retrain him possibly throughout this rebuild. But again, quite a lot of good young talent. The likes of Euro. Yelena Yoro, of course, 17 years of age. Looks really good this year in FM. We can get him built up a few more seasons into the game. Got a high potential ability. So let's see if we can try and get him up to the dizzy heights of being a first teamer for us within this rebuild. But you've met the team now. You've seen what we're working with. Of course, of the first season, there will be no transfers done. So let's simulate through the first season how we've seen how we've gotten on with just the tactic alone and no transfers made. So season number one in the bag, we come back now. It's been a very successful first season here for Lille. Coming fifth in the league, I don't think that's a bad first season really taking over the job and getting this team newly fitted to the system of playing the new tactic, of course. And the way the team's going to change around and rebuild into this season. So yeah, fifth in the league, we finished in the end. It could have been fourth, but very, very close to getting fourth at one point behind Marseille in the end. But... We'll take fifth for season number one. But in terms of the Coupe de France, it didn't really go to plan. The semi-finals, we got knocked out by PSG. PSG are just so good. I mean, look at it in terms of points. We're still so far away in terms of points in the league. So when it came to the cup competitions, we're just really far away still. We lose to PSG. So no silverware in season number one. But we do knock on to get some European football, get in Europa Conference League for the following season. Jonathan David being one of our top performers this season, of course, in 33 games, getting 16 goals, 3 assists, but in all comps bagging 20 goals this season. So a great season for Jonathan David. But ahead of the new season, we're going to have 24 million to spend, and there's a few players going out of contract. Some of the older states, but like Ismaili, are going out of contract right now. So we're going to try and work them boys out the team, and then we'll bring in our new, fresh, young crop. Ready to get the new season started for Lil for season number two. So let's dive in, season number two, and see what transfer business we have done. And we're back to start of season number two now. We're getting ready to start the brand new season. We probably took straight away on those transfers. So leaving the club, we'll mention those players first. Starting with his Marley. We mentioned him in the leave on a free contract. He went to Wolves. Belay went to Fulham. Usman went to Kathleen? Kathleen, maybe? I don't know that one, actually. Uh, Rabuna went to Red Star. Ribeiro with the Celta, which obviously this happened in real life. Some of these boys as well. We've actually loaned Lenio out this season to get some first-team football to Levante, whilst Haladson has gone to Valencia again to get that first-team football. The big one, though, Elon Zagoza went to Fiorentina for 27.5 minutes. A lot of money, but it meant we could spend some more in this window. And we started quite big. A lot of loan fees went out for the first two. As first off, we went to Manchester United and bought Ganacho in on loan for the season. I'm hopeful we could try and get him to stay around the end of the season, but there's a massive fee of 63 million for the Ops North future fee for him. And the other one being from the Premier League, Levi Colwell comes in from Chelsea on loan for the season. Great centre-back option. Probably come in and start straight away for us here at Lille. We then went to the free market and bought Sean Longstaff in. Looks a very good centre midfielder at this point in the game as well. 27 years of age. Looks solid. He'll definitely come into the first team and be useful for us this season. we got Brandon Soppy in for 6.5 million. I thought that's quite a bit of a bargain for Soppy, really. 23 years of age. Very good fullback. Can play both sides for us as well. So he'll play left or right. Yeah, I'm not really sure. He's better on the right. But we'll see what happens with that, though, because there's someone else we'll mention in a little bit later on, who is Joe Scully, who's also came in now from Borussia Mugging Gladbach, who are done on Twitch this year. He's a really good player. Twitch.tv forward slash Murphem, if you haven't watched him before on Twitch, come hang out with us over there. So Scully came in as well. And joining him from Germany was Iliax Mariba, someone I've really enjoyed in Football Manager for the last few seasons. 22 years of age now. 
he looks absolutely insane to put in that midfield. Maybe alongside Longstaff or maybe just ahead of him in that CM role and Longstaff jumps in the DM role. We'll see in a few minutes. We'll see in a few short moments. But yeah, let's carry on. Marcus Edwards, never capped by England, oddly enough, at this point. I mean, I thought he might because in terms of in-game, he looks really good. Maybe not as well in real life, but in-game, he looks absolutely insane. He comes in now, 26-year-old. He can play on both wings. He just looks really, really good. So I'm excited to get him in this little side. And the last one being another low move. That midfield role, of course. We have Warren, Zaire, Emery coming all over. And Paris Saint-Germain coming in from our rivals. Trying to steal one of their players. Was there an option in the end to buy him? 55 million. I don't think we'll be activating that anytime soon. So following the end of the season, we actually got promoted from the Conference League up into the Europa League. So we do have Europa League football this season, of course, being the Coupe de France as well. And we're challenging towards getting a top half, well, I say top half finish. It says top half the board expectation, but ideally I want a top four finish for Lille this season. So let's dive in, season number two, and see how we've gotten on over in France. So season number two finished an absolute bang in the end because Lille came second in the league. We really pushed PSG, but again, it was just still 12 points clear. We didn't really push them very far. We didn't push them far enough, it seems. So let's get into that first league and seeing how we actually ended the season, of course. You can see now on the screen, it was a very good season for Lille. Coming second in the league, 34 games, winning 23, drawing six, losing five all season. Losing five all season is not good enough, really. But we did score the same amount of goals as PSG. Both scored 85 goals this season. We can just concede a lot, lot more, though. So... We came close to this season, getting second in the league. Is there a chance we're in this rebuild we can't actually win that league title? So I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. But yeah, other competitions. Uh, the ninth round, we got knocked out by Cannes in the Coupe de France. That, that, was, that one was quite embarrassing, really. It wasn't a great showing from the boys. Should have done better in that one, really. For sure, they finished 16th in the league as well. They were relegated. Well, they're in the playoff, so they might be relegated. But yeah, coming second to them, it wasn't good at all. But... We did go all the way to the Europa League semi-final. We almost got all the way. Went to the semi-finals, losing to Manchester United, 3 to an aggregate and ending that one. Whilst Monaco battled Atalanta and saw Monaco go to the final to play at Manchester United in the end. And Monaco won 2-1. So Monaco do bring the Europa League back to France. But it was not for us because Monaco did it instead of us. So not great really. But again, getting to the semi-finals. Not a bad showing for Lille at all. But again, Jonathan David is absolutely impressive during this rebuild this year. 20 goals in 31 appearances. A really good return for him. In all comps, 29 goals as well. So he's having an outstanding time here so far at Lille. Uh, Dikaito has got 17 goals at centre-back. You'll notice if you've watched my tactic videos, you're very much focused on good set-pieces, trying to get a lot of goals from those corners. He is doing just that. Last season didn't really work out for him. We're going to get it one all season. But we changed him around. Moving to a different role this year. And he's bagged 11 goals this year. So that's definitely working out better for him this time around. Ganacho had a really good low move. Well. 15 goals, 10 assists for him. But I don't think he'll be staying because money. Um, Yazinski got 13 goals and 15 assists. And Marcus Edwards bagging 13 goals and 24 assists. This guy this season absolutely cooked on that right hand side. 24 assists in all competitions. 20 in the league. 4 in the Europa League. What a player. So we go ahead now to the new season. We've been given 50 million to spend going to season number three. That is some serious, serious money to spend. So let's find what happens now. Then we go ahead to season numero three. And we're back, season number three. Now with Leo, of course, we have 50 million to spend. And we spent a big chunk of that straight away out the gate. 25 million on Basuma. Half the money went straight away on the midfielder from Spurs, of course. It hasn't really worked so much for him while well, Spurs so far. So I'm really hoping that we can come here now, rejuvenate his career. He's 29, he's got a few more years about him still. So Basuma comes in now to add that depth midfield. Definitely be a starter for us. He's down as a star player. And he looks really, really good within game. So I'm very excited to see how Basuma gets on for us in the game. And then, of course, July 1st ticked over. We spent another 25 million. We only have 50 to spend, remember. So that's how it happened. But just transfers out from the club. He sees we have a 3 million. I thought it was quite cheap for him in the end, but we couldn't get much money for him before. He won't be a starter in the coming season, so he does leave the club now. Um, Tito went on a free transfer, and Faze went to Lorient for 46k. I mean, I don't know if he ate. I'm, I'm not going to use you. Sorry, mate. So off he went. Uh, free transfers, of course. Liam Dillac came on a free transfer from Manchester City. Looks very good still at 23. Surprisingly, no one really snapped him up from the Premier League, really, but... We'll take him all day long. We have Champions League football, so maybe that's why. So, yeah. Uh, Carrie Burrow came in from the rest on a free transfer as well. Great young striker as well. 23 years of age. Looks really, really good in the game as well. So, him and Dalap will be fighting to try and get a striker role this season on the team. 
Uh, Adam Plaza came from Bayer Leverkusen for 20 million, potentially rising to 25 million. He looks really insane. He'll take on that left hand side for us now, of course, with Edwards on the right hand side. Plaza looking out on the left hand side. David Zima came from Roma for six, um, 2.6 million, sorry, even. Comes in the centre, about 25 years of age. Good jump from Rich, good heading, six foot three. It looks pretty good. It'd be a good backup defender this season for us. We brought in Wissam Ben Yedda out of free transfer, of course, formerly of Monaco, formerly of Seville. 35 years of age. He's definitely a backup striker at this point of his career, but bar not being able to run, he looks really, really good. Welcome, Ben Yedda, to the club. Uh, Miguel Manga came in from West Ham and alone as well. Nice little right back option, really. Looks pretty decent. I'm hopefully he can develop and probably can sign the end of his contract. 6.75 million in the loan finishes, so maybe we'll do go and grab him at the end of this. And then we went back to Chelsea again for another low move. Seems Chelsea love loaning those players over to Strasbourg or to Lille in this case, as we've took Angelo on loan for the season as some rotational cover for Marcus Edwards on that left hand side, which will now make the team look like so. Jonathan David up front, of course. Edwards and Harzak have mentioned on those wide positions. Mariba in that CM attack role. Longstaff, Bissouma in that CM roles. And the defence. Same as last season, really. Dejalo, Dikaite in the middle, Soppy, Scali on the left and the right hand sides, and Chevalier up front. So, season number three, let's dive in and see how we get on this time around. Can we push PSG even closer? So season three comes to an end now at Lille and we tried to push them even closer. We did really, really try. And we'll start off with the league phase first because we didn't actually win the league. I mean, it's probably a long shot winning this early in the save still. But we came very, very close yet again. Just in second place on 78 points this time. In the 34 games, winning 23, drawing 9, losing two games all season, which is absolutely insane. We lost less games than PSG all season, but it wasn't enough. We drew too many games and PSG winning 27 out of their 34, which is too much for us. They went 85 points, us and 78. We come second yet again to Paris Saint-Germain. And I thought quickly we'll just touch on what they've been doing in terms of transfer business themselves so far. They've been doing much, of course. A lot of these players leaving in real life now. They've brought in Vinicius Jr., Paolo Dybala's there, Gnabry's there. Tyler Adams, oddly enough, obviously transferred from Leeds to Bournemouth as well recent times as well. Nico's there now. Screening, of course, but they're in real life on a free transfer. I'm not sure who this keeper is on the room. I'm guessing he's on the bench being rested at the moment for some reason. Neymar's still there, of course. Rodrigo, so actually went to Real Madrid and got Rodrigo in. And they only got Vinicius Jr. That's just ridiculous, man. This club have too much money. How on earth are we meant to beat this team to a title? Pedro Concalves, Mateo Kovacic, even Ilsa. This is on the reserves. Concalves and Kovacic have played like four and five games all season. Oh, no, sorry. They scored four or five goals all season. They've played 39 games with Kovacic has. And I don't think really everyone fits in this team. Kylian Mbappe, we haven't even mentioned Mbappe yet. 37 goals a season for Mbappe. This team's just too good. But it does make you wonder, can you actually win league earn during this rebuild? It's going to be very, very hard. Win the third season now, second place again. Champions League got knocked out by Inter Milan in the round of 16. And then Monaco, the Europa League champions, knocked us out in the 11th round of the Coupe de France. So again, no silverware again. Second place, we have qualified for the Champions League again. We do have money to spend 30 million, so not as much as last year now, but... It's not bad for 30 million. The team is pretty solid now. We are competing on quite a high level now already. I don't think we need to do many more changes to this team. So we'll go ahead now and see what happens in season number four. So we're back for season number four. And we will be starting the season with the Trophy of the Champions. As, of course, we came second place in the league. PSG won everything else. So we'll be selling them in the Trophy of the Champions at the start of this campaign. But transfer business, what has been happening in the transfer list? Um, it's been interesting. Yeah, it's been very, very interesting, to say the least. We'll go to the end of last season first. First off, we went to Lyon and we loaned in Pierre-Luc Vial from Lyon. A new gen in the game this year. He looks absolutely insane. Look at those mentals. Physicals are really good as well. Probably playing as a DM most likely. Could play centre back. He's only six foot. Jump from reach of 13. So ideally for me, he will play in one of those DM roles. If we can keep him at the club at the end of his contract. He has no option to buy though. So it would be a case of not paying a lot, a lot of money. But right now, probably coming in just as the backup. And then Arda Gula came in from Round it for 20 million. We're converting the plan the one the wings most likely. I'm not sure it's going to be the right or the left just yet. Most likely that right hand side being left footed. And probably replace Marcus Edwards with Gula going forward. And then. We got silly, we got silly. We'll start at the top. Young Min Sun came in from Tottenham Hotspur at age 35 for 4.9 million. He looks really, really good still, Young Min Sun, honestly. And I thought, bring him into Lil. He looks solid. Welcome in, Young Min Sun. Uh, Matt Asar came from Tottenham Hotspur on a free transfer course. We took previously Pursuma, now gone back to Spurs again. This time took Matt Asar off of them. 
We went to Newcastle and took Elliot Anderson as well. We like Newcastle players, it seems, as well. Of course, long stuff in the past. Now, Elliot Anderson making the switch on a free transfer over to us. James Trafford on a free transfer from Burnley. He comes in, of course, formerly of Man City. Made the switch now over to Lille for this season. Finley Burns, free transfer from Man City as well. Another good young defender, 24 years of age now. Very good backup player indeed there. We then went and got Jamie Shackleton, of course, formerly of Leeds United. He went to Anderlecht within the South for a few seasons, and now we've brought him over to Lille. So, yeah, we've been quite busy. We've been very, very busy indeed. The best one, though, I think, for this one, anyway, 6.5 million for Javi Gallon. He's 32 now, but look at the attributes. Even at 32, he's a starting left-back for the best European clubs in the world, for me, personally. He looks really, really good. Chaka Ray, 950k. Thomas Delaney, of course, formerly Seville, Dortmund. He's been around for a while. Delaney, age 35, adds depth in that midfield. And then on the free transfer, Nabal Fakia returns to France. So in terms of that best 11 now for the new scene, we look like this. Young Winston's going to be leading the line now in this formation. Edwards and Hosek outside. Fikiak going for that same attack role. Looks like the best option for it right now. So I'm quite interested to see how he gets on now. He's going to be a little bit old as well now. So we'll see how he gets on from there. Of course, there's a good passing range though. Bisuma, Mariba, Shakhtar to the right back. Diakite with Dejalo through the middle and Javi Galan taking up that left-hand side at left back now. The team looks solid. Season number four. Can we challenge this time one more step with PSG and get a little bit closer to winning that all-important league and title? So season number four is done and it didn't go to plan. We didn't even get second. We actually came third this season. It wasn't a good season at all for us. Coming in third behind Monaco. We finished on 80 points. Eight points behind PSG. Monaco only four points behind PSG. So PSG are giving us a bit of a chance here to try and catch up. In those 44 games, we've won 24, drawing eight. Only losing two games again all season. PSG lost four games all season. But they just got a monster 99 goals. But again, they did lose to us. They lost 1-0 to us when we played them at home. So... We're looking good. We're getting closer, but Monaco are now trying to edge that gap. I mean, the gap between fourth and third, between Ren and Lille right now, is ridiculous. Over 20 points that gap is now, but that top three are really edging themselves away from everyone else in the league. In terms of the competitions, we came runner-up in terms of the champions. We didn't actually beat PSG. We lost 5-1 in that first game. Mbappe hat-trick. Mbappe is very good. Who would have thought it? Um, so Etienne knocked out in the 11th round of the Coupe de France. And the round of 16, we got knocked out by Monaco in the Champions League. Typical, we get a French team. One of the ones that can only beat us in this game so far. And we are knocked out in the round of 16 in the Champions League. But of course, we do qualify for the Champions League again this season. We have 19 million to spend. So it's a lot less money yet again we do have to spend this season. So let's go ahead and see what happens at the start of season numero five. So transfers done. Season number five is ready to start now. We have three million from the budget. We do have a bit of a wage problem here, so I mean, we can't actually quite easily fix that. We, we can't, we can't even pull it across. So we can't fix that. We will be in the red for our wage budget for this window. But transfer, what has been going on here at Lille? We'll go back to the end of last season. We can start from there. Maxence Lacroix came in for 26.5 million. He adds some amazing depth now in defence, of course. Oddly enough, still not being capped by France within this game, but I suppose France do have some very good centre-backs. But I mean... He looks insane. He comes in now to score up that defence. And then right again at the end of that window, Jao Carlos comes to Palmeiras. He is a new gen. And he looks a very good striker indeed. I don't think he'll make an appearance in this season, but one for the future, of course, you can take over these saves if you join the Discord. Take over these saves and carry them on. You can carry on being Lil within this save. So outgoing transfers. Big ones. Chevalier went to Fulham for 23 million. We lost our starting goalkeeper, which meant we need to have a new goalkeeper, which we'll get into that in just a moment. Jonathan David finally did leave the club. He went for 19 million over to Barcelona. Halal went to Wolfsburg for 12.5 million. Elliot Anderson left for 4.6. Delap went for 4.2. So everyone bought in a free transfer last season. Already at the door and made a profit on us. We did have a lot more money to spend in this window. Papi Sar went out 4.1. Bio went for 3.8. Longstaff went for 3.7. And the list goes on. Trafford, Unyas. Players have only been here about a year, some of these boys. Finley Burns went out on loan and race straight away this season, so we've been getting rid of a lot of these boys. But we went in this window, our final window in this save, and we spent massive. Started off first with Emmy Martinez coming in for 12.5 million, age 35, to be our number one for this season. I like Emmy Martinez in this game. I hate to say he's a Birmingham City fan, but he's a very, very good goalkeeper. Uh, Jao Cancelo came in from Manchester City on a free transfer, age 34. Still looks really, really good. Hasn't got the legs as much no more, but as a backup player for left back and right back, Still pretty darn solid. Marcus Tran came on a free transfer from Inter, of course. In real life, free transfer from Gladbach to Inter. Now, again, after his six-year stint there, five-year stint there, 
free transfer over to Lille, back to France for him. So Gino Desk came for 4.7 million over from Borussia Dortmund. 27, still very complete, can both play left back and right back. I always love a full back and do both sides. Jose Sandala came on a free transfer as a backup goalkeeper this season. He looks okay, but again, he's very much that backup. Malik Tillman came from Augsburg for 11 minutes. I really like Tillman this year. He looks very, very good. Very versatile midfielder. He can play a few different roles. Can play up front as well if we really want him to. So. Oh, the low work rate lets him down for me personally, but he looks solid. He looks very, very solid. David Alaba, an interesting one now. 36 years of age, makes the switch over to Lille, leaving Real Madrid. 15 grand a week. Still is pretty good. Physically, he's a bit, mm, yeah, questionable. But still decent. Again, versatile players. We love versatile players. Thomas Lamar comes back to France now after leaving Manchester United for 7.5 million. I've heard a bargain, really. Looking at the attributes and the value that already. Very much a bargain. Lamar comes and joins us. Julio Encisco comes in for 30 million. This is a big one. This is a very big one. Of course, at Brighton in real life, went to Leverkusen for 31 million. The load him out for a season, oddly enough, here. They haven't really played him. But now, 30 million, and Cisco makes the switch over to France. I'm hopeful he can be a very good player indeed for us. Rodrigo Ribeiro came for 11.5 million. Great winger, can play striker. Looks pretty darn good as well. Good little bit of business for him. And then some free transfers. Starting off with Alexander Mitrovic coming in from Fulham. Been there for a few seasons now. Still an elite goal scorer at age 33 as well. Remo Fulier comes in in a free transfer as well, of course, after leaving Nice. We have also then Orsic coming in. Formerly of Everton, Southampton in this game as well. Been to Everton after, after Southampton and Trazenspor. And then Ruslan Malioski comes back to France. Of course, he's at Marseille in real life right now. Went to Leicester in this game. He's now back at age 35 to add some depth in that midfield. Which now leads us to the tactic, of course, the perfect 4 3 3. And this is the team now. Mitrovic signed up from. We've got Hyungmin Son, who's available to play there as well. Marcus Tran can play a player there. We've got the likes of Lamar, David Alaba, all sat on the bench right now. They're a bit older, but the good, versatile players you can still bring on from that bench. Like Nabal Fakir, he's on the transfer list now. He's not really playing. Delaney, Orsic. These are all backup players right now at this point. Not even starters. Jock Cancelo's in there. Malioski, of course, as well. And the list goes on. Even Ardi Gula, not really playing much at the moment. He's also available in that team. So, I mean, the list of players is endless right now for this team. This is our final push to try and win a league title here in Ligue 1. Let's see if we can do it. Season number five, let's go. And we're back, season number five, and where we didn't do on the Champions League, we knocked out by Porto. We won a domestic double. We finally won the league and we won the Coupe de France. In the final season, we did it all. We'll start with the Coupe de France, beating Nice 2-0 in that final. Goals from Mitrovic and David Zimmer. Last minute goal in the 92nd minute. Saw us pick up our first bit of silverware, the save. And then it only got better from there. Because, of course, we went into League 1. It was our final season to try and win the league with Lille. And we finally managed to do so. If we go into the table now, you can see now. In 34 games, we won 28, drawing 6. And lost 0 games all season. An undefeated season for Lille in League 1. We, we took PSG all the way. 3 points clear in the end. Didn't lose a game all season. We scored 82 goals. PSG got 91 goals. I scored more goals. But they lost one game where we didn't. And they lost it to us. Which is even more bittersweet. We beat the PSG 2-0 in that game. It was the game which won us the league title. When the final games lean towards the end of the season, you see here, 2-0, 1-0, 4-0, 2-0, 2-0. We wasn't conceding any goals for such a long time as well. Barely conceded any goals all season. One goal in this game against Lens, and Etienne conceding one goal there. There's one goal here and there. Porto put six past us. I don't honestly understand what happened in that game. But most games, we barely conceding any goals at all. We did very, very well in the league this season. An undefeated season for Lille, and we secured the league title back here in Lille. Which I probably mentioned as well, there's a few honourable loan mentions that came in that January to really help push it over the line. And Golo Kante, age 38, came in on loan from Arsenal. It was at Arsenal now as well, of course, oddly enough. Making the switch now. Of course, went to Chelsea, went to Saudi Arabia, came to Arsenal, and age 38, came on loan here to Lille. He was very good, 17 appearances, he's got five assists as well, so he was a very key man in that team. We did get a Panda in on loan as well, and he only got one appearance. So I'd be surprised by that, Ruku. He's a very good player in FM this year, but wasn't used, had him on loan. Kyle just sat there and didn't really do anything, and now he's very unhappy. So I don't think we'll see a pender again anytime soon. But there you have it, though. Lille, league champions and Coupe de France champions. It took to the final season. It took to the year 2028. It took five seasons to do it. But we finally bought the league title 
back home to Lille. So thank you for watching this Lille rebuild. I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you enjoyed the tactic and want to try out yourself, that will be linked down below. The Murphy and Perfect 4 3 3 formation. And of course as well, if you enjoy these rebuilds, there's a playlist in that top right corner right now. Go watch some more.